Every single Sonic fan knows what the Chaos Emeralds are. Get seven of them, press a button, you're gold, you can fly, you're invincible, you've transformed into Super Sonic. Cool stuff. But this is a franchise that's gone on for over 30 years. There's obviously more transformations that Sonic, his friends, and even his enemies undergo across all the different continuities. So as suggested by my good friend SilverPlays97, let's talk about what are arguably the most obscure ones, starting with the games, which don't have all that many. Okay, sure, your average Joe probably doesn't know about Dark Spine Sonic from Secret Rings or Excalibur Sonic from Black Knight, but considering that both have appeared in more recent mobile games like Dash and Speed Battle, they're not all that obscure. You're probably never going to see Hero Shadow or Dark Shadow again, though. These forms first appeared in Shadow the Hedgehog back in 2005, and occur when you fill up the hero or villain meters on the top of the screen. How do you do this? By wiping out the United States military, and an alien race, of course! Hero Shadow can use Chaos Control to go fast or slow down time, while Dark Shadow can use Chaos Blast to destroy fucking everything in his path. You also get infinite ammo, which, as some call me Johnny once said, is where it's at. These forms are absolutely not that obscure though, let's be honest. They're central gimmicks in the game, and if you've played it, you've probably gone through these transformations. Have you transformed into Hero Shadow Android or Dark Shadow Android from the game's multiplayer mode though? If you're thinking, yes I have right now, you're a fucking liar, no one actually plays Shadow the Hedgehog's multiplayer mode. You become them exactly the same way as you would if you were playing Shadow, and they have the same abilities, only this time, they're robots! Let's move over to the comics now, because holy hell, there's a lot of transformations in them that you probably never knew about. The obvious one to talk about would be the Golden Armor from the Sonic Adventures Bond Dessine, but I already covered that in the Obscure Sonic Characters video, so go and watch that if you want me to talk about it and its hilarious Sonic Wikizone entry. It is effectively just Super Sonic, so it's not too interesting, unlike Fleetway's publication's take on the transformation, which is probably the one you've got some familiarity with. He's evil, near invincible, and has a very cool design, which has led to him seeing a resurgence in popularity online in recent years because of this game called Friday Night Fish and Chips or something, I don't know, I've never heard of it. You might not know that there's another version of Super Sonic from Sonic the Comic, one that I'd argue is far more interesting. In issue 168, Sonic and Amy travel to another universe that is ruled by an evil dictator known as King Sonic, effectively being its version of Robotnik. A fight inevitably ensues, which leads to King Sonic being pushed to his limits, and turning into his super form, one that is completely peaceful and hates war, unlike the main version seen throughout the comic's history. He also talks like a stereotypical hippie, which is fucking hilarious. While we're talking about Sonic specifically, because I'm not covering him again in this video, let's talk about Ultra Sonic from the Archie comics. Visually, there's not much to him. He has stars that trail behind him, kind of like the invincibility power-up from the games, and he also has this cool electron loop surrounding him, but besides that, Sonic looks like he normally would. And that's fine, because he makes up for it with sheer cool factor. He's faster, he can alter matter itself, and can also adapt to the environments that he's in. In issue 71, he becomes Solar Sonic when travelling through a desert, Polar Sonic in the Arctic, and Eco Sonic in a rainforest, all of which give him immunity to the conditions of those places. These alternate forms only appeared in this issue, while Ultra Sonic only showed up twice more, the latter being in a free comic book day special where he fought the evil wizard Norgus, and the former being in issue 66, which was his first appearance. He also battled Norgus here, but was helped by Hypertales and his flicky army of death. Jesus Christ, that's two Johnny references in one video, what's going on? Eh, might as well take this opportunity to talk about the... super flickies? I don't know what else to call them. These little guys first showed up in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and only ever appeared again in its subsequent ports over the years. There's four of them, they're invincible, and god help bad Nick's bosses and especially poor Knuckles, Jesus. Because they will kill on sight like cheese in Sonic Advance 2. I'd love to see them again, but considering how strict Sonic Team has been about bringing Hyperforms back, I doubt they'll ever make a comeback unless the folks over there feel like proving me wrong. Please? Their only expanded media appearance was in the Archie comics, but this was also limited to just one appearance alongside Hypertales, as well as the next transformation we're going to discuss, Ugly Norgus. Yeah, that's his actual name. Like with Ultra Sonic, he's not all that visually different from regular Norgus besides... looking a bit more unflattering, I guess? However, as you'd expect, he's a lot stronger, faster, and is also capable of creating even more powerful magic. So much so that he can open portals to other dimensions. He also manages to exhaust Sonic and Tails of their abilities, and is said to be able to grow even more powerful. Until he's defeated when Nate Morgan, a scientist and ally to Sonic, is able to wish him away with a ring hidden in his glasses, leaving ugly Norgus to never be seen again in any more comics. Alright, enough about a character who regrettably hasn't appeared in nearly... 
a decade, oh my god, let's talk about some of Tails' transformations before I start feeling old as shit. Sonic Lost World had one extremely cool moment that I was really hoping would lead to a boss fight. The appearance of Cyborg Tails. It didn't, of course, which is a shame, as Sonic the Comic did it 20 years earlier. And in its second issue, no less. And, all things considered, it's a pretty good story and definitely obscure. Robotnik, being the dickhead he is, captures Tails one day, brainwashes him, and shoves him into a partially robotic suit so that he can kill Sonic. This doesn't work out, obviously, as Tails overcomes it fairly quickly, but not before getting an attack in and telling Sonic that he hates him. Nice one, dude. He would nearly become a cyborg again a few issues later that followed up on this story, when he was captured by one of Robotnik's badniks. That was of course prevented when- OH JESUS CHRIST! Fun bit of trivia for those not familiar with Sonic the Comic, these two issues were written by Mark Miller, who you probably know as the creator of Kick-Ass and Kingsman, as well as his work for Marvel and DC like Civil War, Old Man Logan, The Authority, and Superman Red Sun. Fun trivia over. Let's talk about my Twitter banner for a minute. I've had people DM me on the Crazy Ass Sonic Moments account in the past, asking where this panel of buff tales comes from, and if it's actually an official thing. The answer is yes, I wouldn't be bringing it up in this video if it wasn't. This is Tyson Tails, the result of Tails merging with other versions of himself from across the multiverse, and thus becoming the Chosen One. He's... certainly a transformation, having the ability to alter reality, shoot lasers from his eyes, and absorb the power of others, including Mammoth Mogul, which leads to the villain's defeat. I don't have anything else to say about this other than... why this design? That alone definitely makes it questionable as to whether this transformation is obscure or not. It gets spread around the internet all the time. I'm also getting uncomfortable just looking at it, so let's move on to a transformation and a design that shows just how much the Archie comics actually cook. Holy shit. I'm not even joking, Crystal Omega might be my favourite transformation out of all the ones I've covered in this video. This design is fucking cool. Yeah, it's Omega, but with crystals, but Omega's design is already fucking amazing, shut up. He kicks ass in this form too holding his own against Shadow, Amy, Knuckles and Rouge for quite a bit, and is only stopped when they manage to get a few good quick hits on his weak spot, leading to this legendary T-pose. Highly recommend that you go and read the Shattered Arc from Sonic Universe just for Crystal Omega. Let's go ahead and wrap things up with a lightning round of obscure transformations from the different cartoons, because again, I've still not seen them all in their entirety and I can't be bothered. Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. The best version of Robotnik becomes Supreme High Robotnik. He's jacked to shit, has Chaos Emeralds for a necklace, he can turn invisible, he's immortal, he can't be killed, and he can also bring anything to life. I love him. Sassy M and Sonic Underground have nothing that's obscure, let's skip them. Sonic X has Serpenter. It's a cool robot made up of other robots and has a bunch of cool weapons, then Amy rips it to shreds. Sonic Boom has Furry Eggman. Yes, that's its actual name. He's Eggman, but if he were the Hulk, and if the Hulk were a cute little purple thing. It shoots rainbows from its arse and can fly, and it is genuinely kind of adorable. And finally. Without question, the most obscure transformation in the entire Sonic franchise, one I am willing to bet 20 quid you have never heard of or can't remember, Super Jim. Look, I couldn't think of any other way to end this video besides a shitty throwback joke, cut me a break.